Hi, welcome to the Microengineering YouTube channel. My name is Michael Rona, and today's video is the first video in my quadcopter flight computer development series. I'm really excited to get going on this project and to bring you guys along with me on my development journey. I have a lot to cover in today's video, so let's just jump into things. So first, when I actually started working on this, the first thing I did was develop a mission statement. Now you guys don't need to like write yours down formally if you do this, but it might be useful as like a thought exercise, but uh, why don't we jump over to my computer there and I'll show you my formal mission statement that I came up with. All right, so now we're at my computer. Uh, so let's go through the mission statement. Um, if you're curious, I wrote this on um, Markdown and this is in uh, Visual Studio Code. But uh, anyways, when learning about complex subjects in university studies, engineering students frequently ask themselves the question, when will I ever use this in real life? The ubiquity of this question suggests that students often never get to apply their course material towards tangible real-world projects during their education. Microengineering, that's me, is developing a quadrotor UAS unmanned aerial system constructed with commercial off-the-shelf components capable of manned and autonomous flight. The quadrotor flight software will be developed from scratch. This project is to serve as an educational experience to learn about guidance, navigation, and control theory, sensor fusion, flight dynamics, and robust software development. Those are some pretty nerdy words. Um, you guys don't really need to write a formal mission statement like this, but it might help you formulate your thoughts, and uh, I wrote this for your guys' benefit. Next, what I did is I decomposed our drone into systems and subsystems and wrote a quick description for each one of those. Um, I found it useful to think of uh, software and hardware systems separately. Um, so let's take a quick look at that. Um, I know this might be a little bit boring, but just bear with me. I, I think it'll be pretty useful for you guys to see this and make you realize how much we actually have to do for this project. Um, so first and foremost is the guidance, navigation, and control system, arguably the most important system. So this is in charge of determining where the drone is in space and how it's oriented, collecting sensor data, and determining motor commands to uh, fly the drone. So within this is the sensing system, which consists of the GPS, which of course tells us our latitude, longitude, and altitude, as well as time, heading, and speed. Next is the inertial measurement unit, or IMU, and that consists of a three-axis accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. Then we also have a barometer, which is a pressure sensor, and it's pretty cool if you measure the difference in pressure from your takeoff altitude to wherever you're flying, you can plug in that pressure differential to a math equation and you can calculate a change in altitude. And then it can also measure um, temperature. Next is the propulsion system, pretty basic, that consists of the um, four brushless motors and propellers and the electronic speed controllers. Then we have the electrical system, which of course powers the drone. Um, that consists of a battery, which is typically like 11.1 volts. Then we have a voltage sensor, which is like a voltage divider circuit, and that will allow us to read the battery voltage and figure out what it is. Then we have a 5 volt DC bus and a 3.3 volt DC bus. Those are power regulators. The flight computer requires 5 volts DC to operate and so the 5 volt bus will supply a smooth and steady 5 volt supply to whatever devices need 5 volts. And similarly with the 3.3 volt bus, the sensors require 3.3 volts and so that 3.3 volt bus will supply a smooth voltage supply to any electronics that require it. Next, not too exciting, is the uh, structural system, which consists of the quadcopter frame, which is like in an X configuration, then the electronics enclosure, or however we're going to mount the flight controller board and everything else. And then, you know, super exciting, the battery security system, basically how we're gonna strap the battery to the drone and make sure it doesn't fly off mid-flight, because that would not be good at all. <laughs> um, then we have the uh, telemetry radio system, which is kind of interesting, so let me talk about this a little bit. So I have a uh, Spectrum RC controller and receiver. Um, the receiver I have does not have a PPM output, so I cannot just directly connect the PPM data signal to the flight computer. I have to read each receiver channel independently and output those to the, com to the flight computer. So what I'm doing is I'm using an Arduino Nano to read the remote control receiver inputs 
pre-process them and then send them to the flight computer. And so what that is doing is like offloading some of the work from the flight computer to another computer. And um, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm using an Arduino Nano to read the receiver inputs and it will output those over a serial connection to the flight computer. And this Arduino Nano will also handle telemetry. So let's talk about that a bit. So like I just mentioned, we have the radio computer, which is an Arduino Nano, and it will read the receiver's PWM inputs and send those to the flight computer. And it will also be in charge of sending transmit commands to the telemetry radio. Then we have the receiver radio, which will be a Spectrum six channel receiver, and it will output my pilot inputs from my controller as PWM signals. Then we have the telemetry radio, which of course will be transmitting the drone status and flight variables to a ground station. This will probably be something like a LoRa radio, an XB radio, um, the very common 2.4 gigahertz NRF24 radio module, or like a 915 megahertz radio. I'm still trying to decide which one I should use, and um, I'll let you know when I come up with one that I'm gonna use. Anyways, um, then we have uh, flight computer software. Um, features. So the flight computer, of course, is in charge of running the control loop and control algorithms and performing sensor fusion and pre-processing. So we'll have to have a data assimilation and pre-processing software feature. And so that's in charge of reading I squared C buses to get all of our sensor data. And luckily there are libraries that we can use to pull data from sensors. You know, we don't have to write our own code to read memory registers. Uh, it's already done for us. Then we also um, need to apply low pass or high pass or median filters to filter out any high or low frequency noise from sensors. Then we also need to process the GPS data. And so that consists of parsing NMEA strings for useful information, and then also doing any coordinate transformations such as latitude, longitude, altitude to ECEF or vice versa. If that doesn't make sense, I don't blame you. Um, talk about it a bit more when we get to there. Then also we need to apply any sensor calibration um, parameters to our sensor readings. Um, anyways, then one of the also one of the most important things is our sensor fusion and state estimation uh, software algorithms. So this is in charge of fusing our sensor data and estimating state variables for our control laws. Um, so this can be accomplished by using a Kalman filter, an, an extended Kalman filter, which is a nonlinear version of the Kalman filter an unscented Kalman filter or a complementary filter. The complementary filter is probably the simplest of the four here, but the Kalman filter EKF and UKF um, are much better, but more complex. And these all fuse sensor data and also estimate state variables. Next, um, but not quite as important, is an integrator. So for example, um, we need to integrate angular velocity to get our angles that we're at. Um, also, I'm thinking about using something called quaternions, and I will need to integrate a, quater a quaternion differential equation um, so I can update things as time progresses. Anyways, um, sorry, kind of going off on a tangent. Um, so we can accomplish this by using something called an oil called Euler integration, or we can do fre frequency domain integration, which is more complicating. Um, probably won't do that, but it's a thing. Then we also have the Runga Kana methods. And so we have RK2 or RK4, that's the second order and fourth order method. And these are all integration algorithms. Not super exciting, kind of boring math, ew. Anyways, um, then we have a, our control law, which is very, very important. And this is the thing in charge of flying our drone. So what these um, do is like given a pilot input or a guidance navigation algorithm input, determine the it determines the motor commands to control the craft to a desired state. And so to do this, we can use a nonlinear control law. Um, you can use LQR control, which stands for linear quadratic regular, late, linear quadratic regulator, kind of a tongue twister. Um, and that controls your craft in a bit of an optimal sense, kind of sort of. And then we, we have the classical PID controller and that's proportional integral derivative. And these are all control laws. Then we have the um, guidance and navigation laws. And so these determine how to control the drone to a desired flight path, for example. So let's say we have two GPS waypoints we want to fly through. So, you know, you draw a straight line between them and then the guidance and navigation laws state, okay, I am here. How do I need to steer myself to get on that um, straight line path between two GPS waypoints to fly there? Also kind of complicating, we'll get there eventually. And then not as important, 
but should be considered is the flight mode switching. So this concerns how to switch between flight modes and we need to also determine the state variables for each flight mode. Finally, we have the um, radio computer software decomposition. So I kind of already talked about this a little bit, but let's talk about it again. So the radio computer is in charge of reading pilot inputs put and outputting them to the flight computer and also transmitting telemetry data from the flight computer. So first we need to read the pilot inputs and so that means like reading PWM signals from the radio receiver and um, collecting stick positions. So how I have my sticks oriented on my controller. Then we need to transmit those inputs to the flight computer um, over a UART connection most likely. And then also collect telemetry data from the flight computer and so that's probably going to be transmitted from the flight computer to the um, radio computer via a UART connection or serial connection. And then finally, we need to um, construct our data packets and a slash transmission string. So what that means is after we get all the data and like flight status and flight variables from our drone, we um, transmit them to the radio computer. The radio computer assimilates all of those variables into a, um, into a structure and then that structure gets sent to the telemetry radio to get transmitted to our ground station so we can make nice pretty live plots on the ground and make our data look really cool. Wow, that was a lot. Uh, that's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, as, and you, as you can see, this is going to be a really complicating project. There's a lot going on in a little drone flight computer and there's a lot we need to do. <laughs> um, anyways, that's about it for this video. Uh, the next one I'm gonna make is probably going to talk about um, sensor selection. I will talk to you guys about the three sensors I have right now. Um, as of now, I have a GPS sensor, an IMU sensor, and a barometer sensor. Um, I already chose what flight computer I am going to use, I just haven't ordered it yet. And so I'll talk you through how I chose my sensors and flight computer and give you some tips and things you should look out for when choosing your own. Anyways, that's it for this video. Um, really, Again, I'm really looking forward to getting started with this project and bringing you guys along with me. So until the next video, uh, see you later.